we got PhD offers. Yay, well done everyone. Congratulations, you got a PhD offer. This is what we've been working for. This is incredible. However, we can't just rest on our laurels just yet. There is a lot of stuff that you need to get sorted that I did not know about personally between getting the offer and actually like starting your PhD. So this video, I kind of want to cover the little like ad mini things that you should be adding to your list or thinking about when you are after the offer, basically. After the offer, great, now what? I'm gonna kick this video off with step number one after you have received your PhD offer. Lol, decide which PhD program you're gonna accept. I'm gonna link the video below because if that's the kind of thing that you wanna be figuring out in this video, then this unfortunately is not the video for you. So I will link that below because that sort of goes through how I decided on which PhD program is good for me. And if you have watched that video and you have decided, congratulations, you just need to hit that accept button, yay. Okay, so after you've accepted your PhD offer, now is the time to start getting serious about your PhD. This comes in many forms. So we kind of have the practical side of things and then you have like the more fun, educational side of things. So first of all, I'm gonna focus on the practical side of things. And this is not gonna be the same for every single program. I'll start that off with one of those just there. But it is kind of, um, I guess kind of generic advice or like general things that you should start to think about when you have chosen your PhD program. So the key thing to do is to get clear on everything that you need to be doing. And I know that this sounds like it's really scary and honestly, like I put it off for a long time because I was absolutely terrified, but getting exactly clear and like peeling back the layers of what exactly you need to do for this PhD program. Some PhD programs are really, really helpful on their website and they will give you like a to-do list, like a new student to-do list. Um, I know that Cornell, like for my program, we had that and that was super, super, super helpful. But they gave us like a massive list of everything that we needed to do with little deadlines, links, and little instructions on how to do it. This included things like reviewing the student code of conduct, watching safety videos, like generic health and safety videos, um, registering for your little ID card and your email address and all of that like package and administrative stuff that comes with that. Sorting out your student health insurance. Do you want a student meal plan? Are you getting student housing? Like that was all included on the list. Basically what I did is I went through that list and wrote down stuff that was relevant to me on a separate like notion document and then um, set out like allocated like days and times that I was gonna try and do those things. If your university has a list, then that is amazing. That is great. If your university does not have a list, it's definitely worth reaching out and asking the college or the admissions team for a kind of vague list or when you might expect to see a kind of list of things that you'd need to get sorted. I know that this might sound needy and annoying, but honestly, do not be afraid to reach out to people and ask for help. Nine times out of 10, like everyone is super, super helpful and very, very supportive. And they will be glad that you're taking the initiative to like get this stuff sorted before you arrive. Especially if you're an international student or you've never been to that college before and you're coming from like somewhere else. It's really, it really alleviates like a lot of the stress just knowing that you've got everything sort of sorted. So reaching out. I am gonna include a little quick fire list here of some generic stuff that I wrote down just so you can kind of add it to your list with like a little description of what I kind of need. So number one I wrote down was funding. And this again is another thing. Make sure you're clear on how you are getting funded for this PhD. Is it entirely paid for by your PI? Is it entirely paid for by the school or the program? How are you getting funded? Does this include tuition? Is it taxable or non-taxable income depending on what country or what kind of program it's for? How often are you getting paid? How much are you getting paid? I know that these are the really, really awkward questions, but honestly getting clear on this funding situation early as possible is going to save you a lot of stress in the long run and stop you getting overwhelmed. You need to know how much money you can expect to be coming in at any one time and how you go about like getting that money. Do you need to set up and link a bank account to the university, for example, so you can get your stipend? All of these things. So definitely reach out to the funding office to get clear on this before you start. It will also help dictate your kind of living expenses. So when you come to like looking for like housing and stuff, how much you can go about doing that. So funding is definitely a number one. So that is funding. The next thing that we need to get super, super, super clear on is the housing situation. So this is definitely something that I'm gonna do an entire video on, which is coming up in the next little series of what to do after the PhD offer. So I'm not gonna dive into it straight away. However, what I will say is it's good to start looking as early as you can. Typically these houses get snapped up super, super, super fast. So it's especially easy to start looking on like rental websites, like community groups, that kind of stuff. If you wanted a house share, whether you don't want a house share, like that kind of stuff, establish what you want from a house and kind of whereabouts you kind of want to live as soon as possible. 
Another thing, and this goes out to all the international students out there, is the visa situation and the passport situation. So for me personally, I had to renew my passport because I had less than six months left on my old passport. So that took like a couple of months to get that all sorted. And then I had to go and renew my, like, get a visa, renew my visa, like get one um, to like study here. So getting like all of the documents from a university, making those visa appointments, that kind of stuff is also extremely useful. The other thing that I started to put on my list, which is less like academic, um, less like administratively focused is more um, like a packing list. Like what kind of stuff am I gonna take with me? What kind of stuff am I gonna leave here? Um, like sorting out my house at home, like sorting out all of that. So like putting that on your list. I know it's like one of those super overwhelming things that you just like to put off, but get it down on the list so that you can take it off when it's done. So now that you've kind of got like all of that little admin list like sorted, I know I vaguely covered like some of the points there. I wanna dive a little bit deeper into my next point, which is setting yourself a system. And this is definitely more of an academic perspective, but it's something that I definitely tried to do before I like got myself into a PhD program from whether you're coming from undergraduate, whether you're coming from like job, whether you're coming from industry, like whatever your background is, the learning style is gonna be different from doing a PhD. Like even if you spent a lot of your time in academia before and you were a, like a tech or something, your learning style is still gonna be different when it comes to doing a PhD program. So what I tried to do is like really get myself clear on setting a system. So to do this, I researched lots of different ways of writing notes. I spent a lot of time on YouTube going through little tutorials um, and essentially I settled on the fact that I was gonna be using my iPad for a lot of different studying techniques. Now I did do a whole um, iPad video, which I will link below on like how I used my iPad during studying. So I'm not gonna go into that massively, but I really wanted to mention this because when you start, you kind of wanna hit the ground running. So like take that little time to practice your note taking, like figure out how you're gonna do it, adapt the ways that work for you so that you can really immerse yourself in learning as much as you possibly can in those like first few weeks. This also goes for reading as well as it does for like, um, actual note taking like have they got pre like they got pre-required reading that they need you to do like i don't know if programs do that still but like if they do then maybe like we could we could think about doing that that kind of stuff figuring out how we're going to read papers like getting yourself a referencing software like just setting yourself up for success so then another thing that I did was trying to make that like about this, it's all trying to make that transition into the PhD life a little bit more easy for yourself. So some colleges I know give you like a little buddy or like someone who's gonna be helping you through the like decision process of the transition and all of that. Um, so if you do have a buddy or like contact details of someone from that program or that university, then it's definitely, definitely worth like reaching out to them at this point being like, hey, got an offer, really excited. Is there anything you recommend me getting sorted beforehand? So that was something that I definitely did. I reached out to my buddy and we had like a Zoom chat and it just made me feel like so much more at ease with like moving to the whole new city, moving to a new program, that kind of thing. If you don't have a buddy, it might be time to start using your LinkedIn. I also did another video on how to use LinkedIn as a graduate student, which I will link below. But using that LinkedIn to try and reach out to some other graduate students on the program if you don't know any and just say like, hey, I'm starting in the fall. Is there anything that you like recommend that I do or like sort out in advance? Um, so that's definitely something that I would think about doing at this point. I think the key thing here is from these conversations is to try and figure out what you don't know. Cause there's some obvious stuff like I covered before, like blah, 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 that you can get from the college, but like figuring out the more like admin -y stuff that like you just don't know that you don't know is gonna come from speaking to those buddies and speaking to people who've been through the process. So just having that chat with them early on can help put your mind at ease and figure out what else you need to add to that massive old to-do list that is just gonna keep on growing. And my final tip would honestly just be enjoy it. Like you've done all the hard work, you've got into a PhD program of your dreams, you've selected it, you're here, like enjoy it. This is a massive congratulations. So um, those are kind of like how I prepared for that period, like after the offer, like through to like starting the PhD program. Um, if you have any other things that you'd like to add, if you've been through the process, like please add it below. We love to learn and we love passing on all of this knowledge. Um, so yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And um, yeah, if you're new here, then please do subscribe to my channel um, for more PhD related content, etc. And I will see you guys back here next week with another video. Bye!